If I had my way, everything would be so nice. This world would be like Paris. No, it would be a paradise. No one would ever have to say, I'm going to get my wish someday. All one would have to do is say, this is my order, if you may. Welcome to another episode of The School Without Walls. I'm the host and founder of this educational program called The School Without Walls. Uh, my guest today is uh, Dr. Mary Brindley, professor here at the university, as well as the director of NABMU, right? I am advisor, advisor to the advisor to that organization. Yes. What is it? National tell me, NA Association of Black Men United. Yeah, the and we interviewed those on the last segment. Right, the last segment you we had that group on. Right. Today, she is uh, the advisor to the NAACP student chapter here on the university campus. Yes. Right? And we have several students here that I will interview uh, today. Now, uh, Dr. Brantley, tell us about how long you've been with the local chapter here at the university. Okay. I started as advisor to the National Association uh, of Colored People mm -hmm. in 2009. And I've been the advisor since that time. Mm -hmm. And we've had um, several occasions of growth. We've had a few ups and downs, but we'd mm -hmm. like more male students as well as female students to become a part of our uh, local college branch, I college see. chapter. I see. Yes, our college chapter. Do you have more females now? We do. We have about half and half, female mm -hmm. and male students. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I'm expounding on uh, adding more males to the college chapter is that the last time we talked about our quality initiative program, mm -hmm. and that is to have African American male, our freshman students, mm -hmm. to become a part of an organization on campus. Mm -hmm. And before we talked about a little bit about the NABMU, National Association mm -hmm. of Black Men United, mm -hmm. and today we're going to talk about the National Association of uh, Color the People, Advancement of Color, Advancement people. Of color people. And so mm -hmm. we would uh, also like to talk about ways that our students can actually become involved. And our students will allude to the different activities that we are involved in, mm -hmm. uh, the things that we are doing to improve, make improvements here on the university campus as well. I see. Now, I notice the students are all male today. Is there any particular reason why we don't have any females? No. <laughs> There's no particular magic or rhyme or reason to this. But we were talking about uh, working with our African-American male students mm -hmm. before we said that um, the statistics have shown that many of our male students tend to come in as a group cohort in the freshman class mm -hmm. about 50-50. We have 50% females and women and uh, males. Mm -hmm. But that group narrows down to maybe 20 to 25% of the graduating class. And therefore what we're trying to do is have a program that we can provide our African-American male students by encouraging that group to join organizations. Mm -hmm. We know that from experience and from research that if you're engaged academically as well as socially engaged, mm -hmm. then you tend to stay and be retained and to graduate the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. That is very important. It's very important information. We only have two more minutes for this segment. Anything else you want to say before we bring the young men up? I'd like to say that our male students mm -hmm. are really doing extremely well in, uh, academically. Mm -hmm. But getting them involved in organizations is very, very important. And I know that once they become involved, as our students will be able to tell you in just a few minutes, mm -hmm. that that involvement tends to commit that student mm -hmm. full time to his academics as well as uh, socially in different organizations on campus. Mm -hmm. And I'm only highlighting two of those organizations. Only two of them? Yes. Now, am I hearing you correctly? Is it, has it been in the past more difficult to get young African American men involved than females? It is because uh -huh. African American males tend to want to get jobs when they're in college. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is get those students focused on academics as well as social engagement. Mm -hmm. If they can defer working 
to later in right. life until after they have gained the required academic uh, status that they would need, then this will help them in the long run. That it will not excellent. take them as long to graduate, nor would they stop out or drop out. That is excellent. That's an excellent idea because some of them come to class so tired, yes. they simply cannot do the work because they're thinking about they're making money. Right. So you have a wonderful idea. And thank you so much. You're welcome. And uh, we'll have them to come up shortly. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. Those of you who have just joined us, I am interviewing members of the uh, NAACP on the University of Arkansas campus. I just finished talking to the advisor, Dr. Mary Brentley. Now mm -hmm. I have Mr. Edlin Marshall. Yes, Edlin Marshall. You're the president, I understand. Yes, sir. Where are you from? I'm from Elaine, Arkansas. Elaine, Arkansas, down mm -hmm. near the Mississippi border, right? In right the on state. the Mississippi line. Yeah, I visited that area. Uh, as a has quite a history about Elaine. We won't go into that, but you know the history, right? Indeed, I do. Okay, and uh, how are you classified here? I'm a senior. Oh, you're a senior. Your major is? Social Studies Education with a minor in English. One of you smart young man. You, you will be certified to teach, right? I most definitely will. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. We have so many youngsters uh, not that wise. They go four years and don't certify to teach. All right, tell me about your role here as president of the NAACP. First of all, tell the community what does that stand for, NAACP. What is that acronym? It is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Okay, and your campus chapter, what are you all you have any projects or anything that you're doing? Yes, um, with the UAPB chapter, we um, we try to be real versed in everything mm -hmm. that we do uh, in politics. Uh, mm -hmm. And our biggest project is the community, mm -hmm. and as well as catering to the student body. Mm -hmm. And when you say the community, what are some of the things you can be more specific about the community? What what do you all do? Um, we like we first believe that the children are our future, mm -hmm. so we like to outreach to the children in the community, um, give them a sense of belonging, make them feel loved, and let them know that there are uh, educated people that look just like them. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the community um, activities that we do is during Christmas and Thanksgiving, we normally go to the Boys and Girls Club. Mm -hmm and uh, we distribute uh, toys and as well as make sure that they know the importance of Christmas. The Christmas just isn't uh, a time of gifts and giving, but it's a time to share those moments mm -hmm. with someone. That's excellent, excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, you're also teaching them to be involved too, aren't you? See, by, exactly. by giving unto them, they will grow up having more of a community service mind. That's sure. excellent. What, uh, is there a fee to join uh, the NACP? What do you have to pay? Yes, on the uh, collegiate level, it is, it is only $10 uh, mm -hmm. a year. Uh -huh. And that, uh, your $10 goes to nationals. Mm -hmm. The $10 goes to nationals? Mm -hmm. for, for registration. Mm -hmm. It's a 10, uh, well actually, I stand to be corrected, $7 goes to nationals. Oh, that sounds more like right. it. <laughs> Keep something for yourself. Right. Okay. Uh, $7 goes to nationals and $3 goes into the uh, chapter's phone. Mm hmm I see. Uh, we have three minutes here. Is there anything in particular you would like to say pertaining to the NACP? Uh, Do a little uh, campaigning for more members? Anything you would like to say you may? I would advise um, students on this campus get more involved with the NAACP. Mm -hmm. And that is because, uh, like I said, we um, have such a wide spectrum of things that we tackle, um, such as one of our upcoming events is the parliamentary procedure. Mm -hmm. I think that it is very important for everyone to learn parliamentary procedure, especially as a young professional that is going into the workplace. Yes. Uh, we need to know protocol. Right. So true. Most definitely. So no true. Protocol. The reason I'm smiling, we only have two minutes. 
I've been in organizations where professional people did not know that, mm -hmm. and they were they were made presidents or chairmen of the organization, and it's sort of it's a uh, it's it's heartbreaking. It is to me it to is. see an adult with an MD, a PhD, or something mm -hmm. that is some stammering through something that he should have learned or realized that he did know and go learn. That's Such true. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. Uh, are you doing this according to any particular order, like Brown's uh, order of, of parliamentary procedure, or yeah, any or Robert's rules? Robert's of order. rules of order. Yes, yeah, sir. there are a couple of them, but that's the most popular one. Look like we should be moving down to the last minute here, okay. and that's your minute. So again, we're glad to have you, and you are. I, I, I like uh, the way you're dressed. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think more of our young African Americans need to realize the importance of dressing for success. Mm -hmm. That's a part of the purpose of this program. This is occasion for a necktie and a shirt. Right. Rather than your shirt tail out. The shirt tail out is on a picnic or somewhere else, right? <laughs> True. I okay, agree. Okay, so thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. All right. So they say it's a man's world? I don't see anybody's name on it. While they were doing their thing, we slowly changed all that. Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. Those of you who have just joined us, I'm Antonio Hobbs, host of this educational program. Today I'm interviewing um, students at the university who are members of the NAACP. Uh, I have with me now uh, Mr. Bolton Coleman. How are you today Mr. Coleman? I'm blessed. How about yourself? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, uh, now, how are you classified? Classified as a junior. You're a junior? Yes. Sir. And uh, where are you from? from the great city of Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee. Well, we're certainly glad to have you over here in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, at the University of Arkansas at Pine I'm Bluff. Glad to be here. Yes. Uh, you have any siblings? I have two older sisters. Uh, they... Uh, One of my sisters went here. Uh, her name's Bianca Hall. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I see. Did she graduate? No, sir. She did not? She transferred. Okay. Well, we hope you will graduate. Okay. Tell me, uh, I understand you're the treasurer. Yes, You're sir. the man that handles the money. I'm the man with the plan. The man with the plan. That's all right. I like that. Are you by any chance a poet? That's man with the plan. That's rhyming. <laughs> do, are you, do you write poetry? No, sir. You don't? No, sir. Okay, but still a man with the plan. Tell me a little bit about uh, the activity, uh, your role. We know that you're the treasurer, but why, how is that so essential to the operating of the NAACP? Well, it's essential to the operating of the NAACP simply because money is a big part of the NAACP. It takes money to make money. It takes money to do certain events. Mm -hmm. Just like every year we do uh, the Wind Banquet, the student chapter hosts the Wind Banquet, mm -hmm. and it takes a lot of money. And the Wind Banquet, it stands for Women in NAACP. Oh, women. Mm -hmm. in, why, are you, how, why are you specializing in women in the NAACP? There are men in the NACP too, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. How do well, they women? We have to we have to show uh, a show uh, a certain standard of gratitude toward our women in the NACP because they have done a lot just as the men have. I see. Very interesting. That's the men honoring the women. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. They decided. That's wonderful. It's a little chivalry. That's that's wonderful. That reminded me of a. I'm a poet. Did you know it? I did know that actually. It, uh, I, and I have a poem that I'm going to share with you in the community. I feel that women, I said woman, I'm speaking of a woman of character. Mm -hmm. When I wrote it, I just said woman is the light of man. Without woman, he's in the dark, he has no sight, therefore it's hard for man to know what's wrong, what's right. Woman is the light of man. I went to Germany, France, and Spain. I found out there that most men believe the same. Although in Germany they said, Mark Nisch, it matters not to me. But in old Paris, they felt so differently. In France, they said, Le Madame et de l'Ile de Lune. So I'm in, I'm in conjunction with honoring our women rather than abusing our women. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, we have three more minutes. 
I've learned that you pay $10, that's the fee, right? Yes, sir. Or do you uh, have any occasions where people make donations to the to your chapter, you know, like we adults? Do. We do, uh, specifically during uh, the season of the Wind Banquet, mm -hmm. which is in the spring, mm -hmm. <clears throat> in the spring semester. And uh, it usually goes towards that, as well as other events that we may host. I see. Other minor events. I tell you what I would like to do for the, I've done this, I've done this on one or two occasions, like some students, I would like to be a member of the NAACP, but I don't have the fund. I would like to commit myself to, uh, how many tens in a hundred? Ten? Ten. Ten students per year. Okay. If, if you would send them to me. I will definitely do that. I'll pay for ten. Yes, All sir. right. Okay. All right, we have two more minutes and, uh, Whatever else you would like to say pertaining to, I'd like to talk a little bit about the university. What happened you came down here? We're glad to have you. Well, my sister, she seemed to have a pretty nice time here. Mm -hmm. um, she did get, you know, well teached here, uh, mm -hmm. and it just wasn't for her. But it's for me, and I plan on graduating from here. It's mm -hmm. a great institution, family environment, mm -hmm. and I love it here. I simply love it here. I, uh, I, if I'm correct, if I'm incorrect, you may correct me. I, was, I heard you had a rather high GPA. Am I, I correct? Yes, sir. It's a 3.9. Yeah, 3.9. I want the world to know that. 3.9. That's excellent. And we have one minute. Uh, so give it, say whatever you like to say pertaining to the university or the organization. Well, I would strongly encourage each and every person at this campus, each and every person that's a student here, to join the student chapter of NAACP. Um, is a great, and it's a great organization, you know, and it can do many things for you. We like to fight for justice, and you can be a part of that. How many members approximately do you have here on campus? We have approximately 25. 25, you should have many more, right? You should have way Yeah, more. Let's, 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 I'm going to encourage adults out there to join me. I've, I have committed myself to give 10 uh, what we call it, 10 um, memberships. memberships, and I'm encouraging adults who are out there to do likewise because I think quite a few are not joining because they don't have the money. See, some of our youngsters are rather struggling financially. Yeah, that's true. All right, thank you again. Thank you again. You know, thank you. Okay. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund reading. No. <laughs> Let me try. <laughs> Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out words. Playing world music. What? I give up. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. Those of you who have just joined us, I'm Antonio Hobbs, host of this educational program. We're in the final chapter of interviewing some young uh, students, young males, and uh, their, uh, their advisor, Dr. Uh, Mary Bradley. So I have with me Mr. George Brown, better known as Mr. NAACP, right? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, where, where did you, how did you get that, that title? Uh, I got the title through the, the general body of the NAACP, they saw fit. Mm -hmm. um, for me to be their representative for the organization here through the student body. And what does Mr. NAACP do that's different than the rest of the members? Um, Mr. NAACP plays a big part in recruitment for the organization. Mm -hmm. um, it's his duty to, to go out to the student body to inform them of the NAACP, inform them of the different um, committees that we have, the different projects that we have, mm -hmm. the initiatives that we take here on campus. I see. And has Mr. NAACP been doing a pretty good job, you say? I would like to say so. <laughs> okay. Look, where are you from originally? I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas. Little Rock, Arkansas. Yes, just sir. down the road a piece, down the so road. to speak, huh? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you have any siblings? I do. I have siblings, not here at the university, not but I younger. have two sisters. Two, two sisters, sisters are younger? Yes, sir. About what are their names? Um, I have a sister named Kim, and I have a sister named Quincy. I see. Uh, 
You encouraging them to attend this university? I am. I see. I am as best as I know how. What grades are they? Um, eighth and eleventh. Eighth and eleventh grade. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, we're sort of glad to have you here. Now, uh, we should have perhaps about four more minutes. Tell us about uh, your president said he wanted to speak more about. He loves this university, and mm -hmm. we didn't get into that. Uh, I understand you think a lot of this university I too. Do. What are some of the things you can say to the public that might encourage uh, more attendance? We, we we really need about four thousand students to function like we should. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, my the best way that I know how to recruit or to, to speak well about my university is simply to speak about my experience. Mm -hmm. um, and my reasoning for choosing this university is simply because I believe in black excellence. Mm -hmm. And there is no other place to get that than the University of Arkansas here at Pine Bluff. Mm -hmm. um, where you do receive a quality education with a personal touch. We are the flagship of the Delta. We do believe in promoting and retention and graduation of African Americans here at the university. Not simply African Americans, but anyone who has a desire to get a quality education. Mm -hmm. But if you study the history of the university, it was set up mainly for poor people who haven't it was. been African American, it right? Was. Yes, sir. And it's designed directly for that. I'd like to share something with you and the community that uh, might help out there. Uh, do you realize that uh, there are some, I've known adults mm -hmm. who were like chairmen of the NAACP, mm -hmm. did not know what, what the C stood for. They thought it stood for all people of color. You know better, don't you? I do. It's for the African American, right? Mm -hmm. And a brief history is once upon a time, uh, the descendants of Africa were called Negro. Are mm -hmm. you aware of that? Yes, sir. And, and soon thereafter, they were called colored. Mm -hmm. And the colored was the offspring between the African and the European. Right. It was not the, the colored Hispanic. Right. It was not the colored Native American. It was not the colored Asiatic person. But I've had some to think all people of color, uh, that have color, this organization was designed to help them, although they can be members. Mm -hmm. Certainly, they can be members. Anybody can be a member. Can, is mm -hmm. that correct? Correct. But it was not designed to help all the people of the world who had color in their skin because all the, the only people on earth, according to my history, that have suffered, have been abused, falsely accused, and misused were the colored people who were descendants of Africa. Yes, sir. Do I have a witness? You have a witness. <laughs> okay. We want to make that clear uh, because, I, I, you know, I just don't like misinformation. Right, correct. This person was very influential and didn't know that because nobody taught that. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like, I want to mention this, uh, Dr. Brentley and I are working on a program by which we can improve the African Americans' uh, command of the English language, okay. not because that we believe the African American has less intelligence, but they weren't probably taught out of public school system how to use irregular verbs. Mm -hmm. We're tired of the head canes mm -hmm. and it didn't went. <laughs> you see? And we will do that unless we're taught properly. Right. It's not has nothing to do with your intellect. It's the experience you've had in your education. In your system. education, right. And the United States system has failed the African American, and I know why. Because during the desegregation, they just dumped the African American over into the white system as though we had an experience equal to that right. of the white student. We're going to change that. We're going to change it here at the university. There you go. <laughs> I think time is almost up. It's up exactly. We got a few more minutes. So you talk to us about wh whatever you just heard me say. How do you feel about that? Um, it's for those very, those very reasons there why I encourage every student here to get involved mm -hmm. for reasons just as that. Mm -hmm. We need to be educated um, to be a people, to come together um, as a better community, as a better race, as a better right. country. It's nothing wrong with being African American, is it? It's nothing wrong it's with like it. It's like Mexican American or European American, but some of our people have had problems since we've had the desegregated school system, mm -hmm. you see. They've had some problems being themselves. So you're for being recognized among people as a Pacific group. For who people. I am. Not that you dislike anybody else, but you like yourself, right? I like myself. Okay, Randy, how much your time? That's it. Thank you so All much. All right, thank you. Okay.